2nd of January 2024. This is another delivery of a loose cannon. It can only be a loose cannon because the shots I'm going to fire is going to make a lot of people very unhappy. But I sit and I listen to things and I read things and I watch things on the various groups that I am and I can come to only one conclusion and that is that South Africa is way deeper in the shit than we can imagine. We have this situation of that voice video clip that went viral about that Navy officer basically declaring a coup d'etat and the emotional section of the WhatsApp nation went ballistic and shared the thing like you cannot believe without really looking and listening and then thinking that guy he is in deep trouble with the defense department and there is court cases against him and there was allegations that he's mentally unstable and he was dismissed and he appealed against that and his appeal failed a few, uh, most recently. So the guy is totally cuckoos. But the guppies, the guppies, in that glass bowl, swallowed that whole piece of bullshit without thinking for a moment. White and black. Then there's that voice clip that is doing the rounds. It is in, uh, the original is in Zulu in which there's a lot of allegations being made about a conspiracy to take Zuma out physically. And that thing went like a wildfire. When I got it the first time, I immediately sent it to a friend of mine that's a Zulu. And I asked him, what is the gist in here? And he gave me a short summary of what the guy is saying. And in that clip, the thing to take note of is the reference of a conspiracy to wipe Zuma out. And that conspiracy is financed from London through the Stellenbosch guys. Now those are things that you cannot ignore because those are realities. What happened here in South Africa in 94? Triple X. And that is the central bankers, Rothschilds and Zionists, the first X, the second X is the WEF, the third X is the global capitalists like BlackRock and all those guys. That is triple X. They have got total control over the Western world and a lot of grip on the rest of the world. Primarily because they've been working on that plan for literally hundreds of years. They basically control the world's finances and they control most of the world's resources and they're stinking rich. Their access to funds exceeds big countries in value. So they can basically do what they want because if they can't take a thing, they buy a thing. Now, Triple X looked at South Africa you must understand, they plan years ahead and they know the future is on energy, electricity. South Africa has got a vast resource of uranium, which will be the energy of the future, whether you like it or not. That's the way. Nuclear power is the way to go. But what they did not like was the fact that South Africa, pressurized by a lot of sanctions and governed by clever people, built an economic engine that was the best in Africa and was competing with the rest of the world on many levels. And this economic engine was sitting on a vast amount of resources, natural resources, in 
If you want to be objective, fuck your emotions. Objective. South Africa could be compared to Russia. Russia has got vast land with vast natural resources. And Russia, 190 ethnic groups, over 2,000 cultural groups. So it is a multi-ethnic cultural society. And Putin managed to bind that lot into one nation. And that nation, sitting on all that resources, is today in a position that they have shown the finger to Triple X and all its associates and they're trying with their military arm, NATO, they tried to bully the Russians and the Russians said, fuck you. And NATO is today in deep shit. Yeah, and then there's this professor from Potschopstrom that sits on one of the news pods and he to make a stupid fucking statement like the Ukrainians are beating the Russians. Fuck. And that man is actually teaching students. But that's the reality. What happened here in South Africa? Triple X had to get rid of the development because all that developed facilities was robbing the West of raw materials that they need to keep their countries running. So they had to destroy the economy of South Africa, basically the industrial base. How did they do it? Through the UN and all those organs that they have, they got rid of the white government and they installed their proxy. Their proxy is the ANC. Now look at the ANC objectively. These militants, blacks, with all their cuck about colonizing and all that shit. The ANC colonized South Africa as a proxy of Triple X. The Buddha got rid of all of that and you wanted to kill the Buddha playing into the hands of Triple X. And as Moses 6 verse 13 says, fuck around and find out. Now you fucked around and now you're finding out. This ANC gives a shit for the people of South Africa. They singularly focus on executing the commands from Triple X. Look at the ANC top structure. They do not represent one single tribe, not one. They are only there for the money and the power. And Triple X installed them because they knew that they, let's call them Freedom Fighter Corps of the ANC, that brag about them fighting, 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 fucking sins. Who knows what? Before even Jan van Ribia came here, they were already fighting for freedom. Now, think about this. A crime fighter fights crime. And a freedom fighter? What does a freedom fighter fight? Fights freedom. Let that sink in. So they get this freedom fighter, uh, freedom fighters into control. The dumbest of the dumb people in South Africa. But they prop them up with money to make them look important and make them look powerful and make them look like leaders. All just smoke and mirrors. And what does it, this ANC do? First thing they do, they go flat out to fuck every relationship in South Africa between ethnic groups, between cultural groups, between racial groups. That, they went flat out for that. So, they made very sure that South Africa can never have be a nation. And they did it effectively. And guys like Malema played into their hands. And, uh, Ramaphosa doesn't even have a choice. He just had to do what he knew. Zuma tried to bring focus back to the tribes. And you know what was done to him. But now I want to talk to the whites, the coloreds, and the Indians. We are the minority in South Africa. 
Now, what you must understand very clearly, the ANC is in total control of XXX, so is the EFF. So those two parties, they execute everything and every command from XXX. I mean, between the two of them, they fucked South Africa properly. Economy, the industrial base fucked. Uh, the EFF is dead set on fucking all relationships between cultural groups. So they are disturbing the peace all the time. The minorities have got two options. The DA or the Freedom Front Plus. Yeah, there's the ICDP and all that other little peanut packets, but they mean nothing. The two major players for the white and the other minorities is the DA and the Freedom Front Plus. The DA is totally captured by Triple X and controlled by the Zionists. So you must understand, if you think the DA gives a shit about your future, think again. They're there for the money and they bring the gullible people to their camp by providing good services, but only on the surface. And go and look, look in Cape Town. There is sections of Cape Town that is working like a clock. And then there's vast sections of Cape Town that is in total fucking disarray and the people is suffering like hell. That's the DA for you. Now I come to the Freedom Front Plus. Now what white Afrikaner Buddha must understand, the Freedom Front was built on the ashes of the Volksfront. The Volksfront was outspoken for the rights of, and they, at that stage they still called us all Afrikaners, but they were totally patriotic. Totally patriotic. And I have published skid marks and Brickmaker about how that Volksfront was burned to ashes, and on that ashes, the Mulders, Grunewalds, Bosovs, and a few other built the Freedom Front Plus. Now what you as a minority, specifically white, Afrikaner and Buddha, must understand, what was done in 92-94 was actually a massive betrayal of the cause of the Afrikaner and the Buddha. So the Freedom Front stands on a foundation stone of treachery. But the gullible whites, conservative whites, threw their weight in behind the Freedom Front, plus because we believed that they will look out for our rights and benefits and protection. They did fuck all of that. Fuck all. I've got a lot of other information that I can unleash, but I will not do it now. The fact of the matter is, they betrayed our trust. 30 years later, the same crowd that basically imploded the Folks Front is still in the management positions of the Freedom Front Plus. But the fuck up is, in this 30 years, they have developed a ruling elite dynasty in the Freedom Front Plus. They've got all the power over the whole party. And if you're a rebel in that party, you don't last. But the tragedy is, the whites, conservatives, looks at it and keeps on hoping that they will stand up for our rights. And it's not going to happen. They have showed us with 
They fucking there only for the money. And they are fully controlled by the DA and Triple X. They're always trying to show us the patriotic face, but behind their backs, they're in cahoots with Triple X. Now, there is now a rebel group standing up and saying, stop this. We must clean the Freedom Front Plus out. Clean the pigsty. Marky Farkok squint. And it looks to me like that movement is picking up speed and momentum. The reality is, there's not one representative sitting in that parliament from the DA, the Freedom Front, plus the EFF, the ANC, that gives a shit about you. They don't. They're there for the power and the money. And you must go and look at the obscene salaries they get. Plus, after that obscene salary is dished into their bank accounts, they've got a more obscene benefits package. That means with us, normal people, have to pay for our cars, our insurance, our medical, and then buy food and that out of our salaries after we've paid tax. They have their salaries for themselves and their needs is covered by these benefits, traveling and our accommodation and all that shit. It is obscene. So, for the normal standard people, if we do not get rid of this ruling class, clean the pigsty out, we are doomed. But look around you. We are being divided on religion, on cultural beliefs, on good common sense values, on skin color, on all of those things. We are being divided all the time and they fuel the fires. They stand on the stage and they say one thing, but behind the scenes they feed the fucking flames of division. Because they know if this nation unites, they will not last a week. They know it. And that guy, that naval officer with that wild fucking message that he came out with is a very good indication of how fragile this society actually is. So, if you are in the minorities, white, Indian, or colored, you have to understand that the Freedom Front Plus and the DA don't give a shit for you as a, a human being, as an entity. Fuck off. It's only for the power. And we need to unite and just clean the pigsty out and take that party over and get patriots to sit in those seats in Parliament. The reality is, if the minorities unite, they can be a force in Parliament. But there's a major block in the blacks that you must not overlook. And that is the block that contains what the ANC labeled clever blacks. Those clever blacks are a powerful lobby, but they have been effectively scattered. So they scatter links. If the clever blacks unite, the ANC is done overnight because they are the people with the brains. Now, when a clever guy have to fight a dumb guy. You must understand. And history shows it. Why did the white race manage to conquer basically the whole world? First of all, on average, they are very intelligent. But when they go into a fight, they don't only come with weapons and muscles. 
They come with a plan. They come with a plan. That's why they manage to win all over the globe. Military might, muscle and a plan. Now in the black population, those planners have been effectively sidelined by the ANC labeling them clever blacks and then focused on them and telling the black people that these clever blacks want to be white. Very effective. But they need to unite. So, we the minorities, we have to take hands with these clever blacks because as a grouping we can be unstoppable. Now, if I say that, there is purists in my tribe that immediately starts with their cuck because they are so narrow-minded that they cannot even tolerate it that I have a decent discussion with a black guy. But that's their problem. Now many years ago, a few years ago, you know, about 10 years ago, I read a paper written by a German guy on democracy. And he said, if you split the society with a center line, you will find that the society will always be roughly divided in two groups, left and right. The left is seen as the more liberals, the right is seen as more conservative. But, he said, now if you take every one of those two sides, the left wing and the right wing, the left wing and the right wing will contain extremists, far left, far right. The extremists, on the left and the right, will usually be around about 4% of the population. Now that 4% can grow to about 14% under severe conditions of stress in that society. Either the left will grow to 14%, the, the ultra-left or the ultra-right will grow to 14%, but they will rarely go past that. And the moment that calm comes back to society, the center block made up of lefts and rights, which is the majority, they will draw support away from these extremists, because people don't like extremists as a, in general. So in South Africa, we have the EFF sitting on the extreme left. And in the Africana group, there are extremists sitting on the right. But then the mixture grays out as it moves to the center line. Now, in practice, you can see it in America. There is always a fair good balance between left and right. But what happened in America is the extreme left managed to get control over the executive part of the American government. And they built that control over a few generations. And now they've got such a strong grip that it doesn't matter who wins the election, left or right, that extremists, their mission will be what America will execute. Now in South Africa, democracy is in its infancy and so forth, so it is not as clear cut as in America. But in South Africa you can already see the problem that we have is that the two major forces politically, the ANC and the DA, those forces are controlled by the same team. And for us, the population, that's a fuck up. Because those two are working together to wipe us out. You must understand that they only need the raw materials. And I read an article last night about what happened in Ghana. The Ghana government issued license to artisanal miners so that they can mine on their own land they can mine for gold. And they did it on the primitive way, without fucking the environment up. But then the Chinese infiltrated that. And with Chinese capital, they started bringing in construction machinery. Whereas the artisanal miners worked with hand tools. These infiltrators are bringing in big machines. And now they're fucking the environment up six love.
and they have killed all the opportunities for the artisanal miners with their equipment and their money. Now Ghana has got a major problem to uproot that and I don't know if they're going to manage to do it. You can see traces of that already happening here in South Africa with the Zamazamas and the problem is that in the end the Zamazamas are extracting the material minerals for the same people that the official mines are doing. The difference is the Zamazamas are unregulated so their production cost is cheaper but they are taking out the minerals for the same people that owns the big mines. The only difference is that those people are making a bigger profit out of the Zamazamas. But what is the bad part about it? The Zamazamas, because they're unregulated, is creating major environmental fuck-ups. And we can already see it. So, what do we do? What do we, the people, do? Now, for the whites, get rid of those Vaseline agents in the Freedom Front Plus. Get decent patriots in charge of that party. For the other minorities, if the Freedom Front Plus can be cleaned out and patriots are in there, that's where you should vote to make that party stronger. That's where you should vote. But it must be cleaned out. All that triple X agents and Vaseline coated fucking traitors must be thrown out so that there's a clean party looking after the people. The DA, I don't know if you can clean the DA up. You're going to have a major problem. The problem with the DA is that the DA as a party is already very multicultural. So you're going to struggle to get consensus on who to, how to clean the party and what is the best route for the party. But I don't think you will be able to clean the DA. Uh, the money of the Zionists is too much. They can buy too much power and resistance with it. So, for decent South Africans, the way to go is a sanitized Freedom Front Plus. But now to do the sanitation is going to take guts. And it's going to take cool heads to plan it. And it's going to take committed people to execute that plan. But if you don't do it, we are doomed. That is what we will be doomed. Because this 2024 election could very well be the last election for a unitary South Africa. It cannot go on like this. The society is going to split along ethnical lines, tribal lines. This is where it's going. Which will be a good thing, because tribes will look after their tribesmen and they will look at the benefit for the tribe. And I'm convinced that the tribes will form loose federations as they need it to survive. But that's where we are. 2nd of January and lo and behold, load shedding is back. Now, I have spoken about it. This load shedding is, was engineered by Triple X. But I'll do a skid mark on that again. For now, think about what I've said. And for the white Conservatives, there is no option but to clean out the pigsty. Yes, there is other options, but that those other options will be brutal, violent. That's not the route we want to go or should even consider. Take a shovel, take a broom, take a bucket of water and soap and go and Clean that big sty. Mark thy farcock schoen. Give me a like and subscribe and share the thing. And I want to thank you, the people that are supporting the channel financially. I seriously need it. But that 
is a matter of conscience for you. If I bring value to your life, great. But understand, it is my time. I'm, I'm in this 100% committed. Have a great day.